All right, day 11. Uh, let's get going with some core work today. So you'll come and lie down. A lift under your head is great um, for this breathing work, a little reset for our diaphragm, um, and then something to hold a block. We've also done this with a weight, if you like that. Um, and then you'll come and lie down, push your lower back into the floor, feet are heavy, head resistant to the floor, and you reach your block up to the ceiling. And this reaching action just helps you uh, to rest your rib cage a little bit more actively down into the floor. And then breathe. <laughs> so inhales through your nose and exhales out through a pierced uh, lips. If you have time, you could pause the video and grab a straw and breathe out through a straw. I know that sounds funny, but um, it can really add a lot. Just a little bit of that resistance of the breath out uh, is incredible. Like that's the best core work you could do is using your breathing. Um, so pierced lips works great too. Um, so each exhale, you're combing your front ribs towards your pelvis. Each inhale, you're inflating more into the back body, some of the duller places where it's hard to breathe, your lower back, your kidneys. <sighs> Keep your lower back really heavy. So if there was a scale under your lower back, it has quite a bit of weight, you're adding to it. And then meanwhile, the scale under your pelvis is, is very light. You've taken some weight off of it. And um, this is just a nice reset of getting the diaphragm to expand straight down into the bowl of the pelvis. A lot of times we tend to shorten uh, the space between your floating ribs and your back body and the top of your uh, pelvic crest there. And so we're just doing the opposite. We're kind of exaggerating the space um, and getting a nice reset. And this is also just really connecting the strength and stability from your front ribs to your pubic bone. We have no bone structure there, quite a bit of open space. And we want our core to be you know, all integrated, talking, working together <laughs> to hold us in this nice upright position. Good, keep reaching the block to the ceiling and resting your head into the floor. One more, two more breaths, let's do two more. Breathing your fullest breath out, one more. At the bottom of your exhale, see if you can hold your breath calmly for just a beat or two. And just take one more calm breath in, calm breath out, and slowly relax. Set the block down, rest your arms by your sides, and just notice your breathing here. Good. Okay, push your lower back into the floor again, and then just slide your right leg long along the mat. Really reach down through your inner right leg. Interlace your hands behind your head and then curl up. Maybe your shoulder blades come all the way up off the floor. And then don't change your lower back as you lay back down. And just doing four more like that, curling up and lowering down. Good. Let's do two more. Keep the right leg long, the lower back heavy. One more. And then you'll lay your head down, switch legs. So right knee bends in, right foot heavy, left leg stretches out long. And then just as you're ready, repressurize your lower back and curl up, <laughs> lower back down. We'll do four more on this right side or with the right knee bent. Good, keep breathing. Two more. And one more. Good. Okay, um, from here, you'll uh, bend both knees in, pressurize your lower back, take your elbows up to the side. I like to bend my elbows so my fingertips point up to the ceiling and we have lots of strength in the elbows. Shoulder blades are heavy on the floor, lower back heavy, and then lift your knees so they're balanced over your hips and then see if you can curl your tailbone just a little bit away from the floor and feel your front abdominal wall engage. So this is a full body rotation. We're gonna reach the right arm to the ceiling and then you're just gonna rotate your right shoulder, right hip off the floor and turn to the left. Let your left shoulder blade, left elbow be heavy and you just rotate, you know, as far as feels good, keep your left shoulder blade down, 
push into your left elbow to come back to center. Keep the tailbone curling a little bit up to the ceiling. Right elbow down, left arm lifts, rotate to the right. Good, keep curling the tailbone up, right shoulder blade heavy against the floor, and then come back to center. Let's do one more round. So we're trying to see if we can move as a unit here and even integrating in with the left shoulder here and coming back to center. <laughs> and then we're taking the right elbow down, left arm lifts, and we twist one more time to the right. Right shoulder blade heavy and come back to center. And then keep that core on as you take your feet down to the floor. Oh, you have to laugh because they're so, it seems so um, like a, such a small move, but it can be quite hard. Um, okay, how are we doing? Let's do one bridge pose before we do the next thing. So I'm gonna take the lift out from under my head, option to take your feet wide apart, your knees squeeze together, and then lengthen your tailbone towards the bottom of the mat and bridge up. So we're just feeling a little balance. I don't want us to get too um, overworked in the hip flexors. Lengthening the tailbone, now opening up this space. So we're really active with the glutes, the hamstrings, um, to help support the lengthening through your, your psoas and your quadriceps. Good, squeeze your buttocks. One more breath. And then release and lower down. Okay, we'll do one more lying on our back here. So we'll lift the left knee up, lower back heavy on the floor, pin a block between your knee and your elbow. Otherwise you could push your hand. And then let that be your starting point. Pressurize your lower back into the floor. And you might stay here the whole time or option to lift your right knee and your right hand. I have it reaching up to the ceiling. Uh, lengthen the back of your neck. And then that same idea of lower back heavy, pelvis is light. You could stay just like this. If you wanna take some movements, you could uh, lower the right toes towards the floor and back up, or extend the right leg out straight and back in. But prioritize your lower back heavy and your pelvis light. You could also move just the right arm reaching overhead and then back up to the ceiling. Doing one more of those maybe or you could extend the right leg up. So I envision a U from my right foot through my spine and up through the fingertips. You okay, Boone? Okay, shh. <laughs> and then maybe right leg and right arm reaching apart from each other. <laughs> and then doing one or two more of those. Good. And then with stability and control, Slowly coming down and out. Ooh, take a breath. <sighs> and then we'll come and try our second side. So pushing your lower back into the floor, pin the block with your right elbow, right thigh. Pause here, this might be enough. Keeping your left foot on the floor is a great little uh, way to support yourself. And we're just integrating here uh, this strength as we push elbow and knee against each other. Really finding that stability of the front body Heavy lower back, a little bit light through the pelvis. If you can keep that, you can float the left foot up. Option to reach your left hand up to the ceiling. And this might be funny. I am shaking here. Uh, if you are not, maybe double check. Is your lower back heavy? Is your pelvis light? Okay, so you have those options, dipping the left toes down or extending the left leg out and back in. <laughs> Are you breathing hard? Uh, hopefully my panting is not too annoying here. Okay, so maybe we did the left leg. Maybe try the left arm. Can the left arm reach up overhead and back up to the ceiling? One more time. And then you have an option of reaching your left leg, left arm apart from each other. So I like to start by straightening the left leg and then they reach apart, keep pinning that block and then coming back. <laughs> and maybe doing one or two more of those. If you can laugh, it's helpful. <laughs> and then with control, we'll come down and out. Whew, okay. I don't know, I feel pretty cooked. Let's do one plank pose just for fun. And then, um, and then I think we're good to go. Okay, so coming upright. Um, I, for, for me, I just need to wiggle for a second in downward dog. 
shifting your hips side to side, and then do whatever plank sounds good to you. So you could be on your hands, you could be on your forearms, you could be on your knees, and then uh, you're really supporting this lift of front body into your, uh, towards your back body. To me, that's so crystal clear here because it's tired, it's been working. Um, so, you know, just seeing that this is what we want to have in our plank bows is this integrated front body. And just taking a couple more breaths in your plank. If you're on your toes, you could rock to the edges of your feet, point your heels to the left, keep that lift into your back body, and then rock your heels to the right. <laughs> and this just always feels good in my spine. And, it, you know, it's interesting, gets the obliques going. You could go one more side. I think mostly it just gives my brain something to, <laughs> to distract it and gets you to stay a little longer, which is so good for us. <laughs> okay, maybe you've been rocking side to side a couple rounds and coming back. And then very calmly lower your knees like feathers and then sit for just a couple breaths and just notice how your breathing feels. So get comfortable in your uh, your seated position so that you can be fully present to your body and your breathing here. Good. Okay. Nice work. Have a great day.